Hello. Today we're going to talk about the top four reasons why I think we should go to Mars. Certainly there's a lot of attention these days on sending humans there, and for good reason. But beyond just setting foot on a neighboring planetary body and walking around and exploring the landscape, there are arguably more important reasons why we need to go there. So let's get right into it. First and most obvious is the evidence for microbial life that NASA has collected since 1976. Given the extraordinary evidence collected from the Viking mission onward, it is my opinion that we really need to send a team of biologists to study what is arguably a living biosphere. Now, <clears throat> What the heck are we talking about? If you have heard nothing about this, well, it's important for you to know that back in 1976, NASA actually sent life detection equipment aboard the Viking mission to Mars. And the landers that they sent there back in 1976 were equipped with biological experiments, which tested the soil for any microbes living there. And guess what? The results came back positive. For those of you who are interested in hearing more about that, I have a separate video interview with Barry De Gregorio, who explains in exquisite detail in his book, Mars the Living Planet, all of the experiments sent on the Viking mission to Mars in 1976 and the detailed results they came back with. Most notably, the labeled release experiment designed by Dr. Gil Levin and Dr. Patricia Ann Stratt. So we've got evidence of microbial activity all over the surface of Mars. So surely that would interest any generation of astrobiologists. Um, all right, so beyond that, we're going to go on the complete opposite end of the spectrum here. We've got to figure out who built these pyramids. Okay, yes, we are going there. Now, what I've got up on screen here are 100% verifiable, certifiable, grade A, stamped, guaranteed pyramids of Egypt. That's right, folks. These are satellite images of Egyptian pyramids. Certainly, they don't look like much, do they? No, of course they don't. They're just ruins at this point. But we have concluded that, yes, these structures are, in fact, pyramids. But guess what? On Mars, we've got structures that are in better shape than this. And I'm about to show you one of them. Now, I need to compare this. I have a terrestrial comparison for you here, okay? If we go down to Mexico and take a look at the Pyramid of the Moon which is in an area that some refer to as Teotihuacan, we see this square pyramid with a flat top and different layers to it, and a front little section with steps, okay? Now, my good friend from South Africa, Jean Ward, he discovered something very much like it on the surface of Mars. And if you take a look at this image here and compare it to the Pyramid of the Moon, you'll notice the similarities four sides, straight lines here. It's got a front little section. Now to give you a sense of scale here, this thing is over two miles big. It's huge. It has these straight lines. It's got sides. It's got symmetry. It's got that front little section. But you got to think the surface of Mars is old, arguably millions, perhaps even billions of years old. We, we don't know exactly when it lost its water and lost its habitable atmosphere. But right now it's just a bunch of dust blowing around. So there's been millions of years of sediment deposition just by the, the very faint winds on the planet. So we do have a good outline of a structure here. But the question is, if we know these structures in Egypt as pyramids, and then we see something like this here and its similarity to the pyramid of the moon, doesn't that warrant a closer look? How can we so easily dismiss that this thing isn't exactly what it looks like? So 
If you'd like to hear more about this particular structure, please go check out my interview with John Ward on YouTube. And if you'd like to see even more pyramids, feel free to watch my documentary, Blue Planet Red, where we feature a dozen others. Uh, and I'll be talking about more pyramids in upcoming YouTube videos. So the next reason why I think we should go to Mars is because it would spur a tremendous amount of technological innovation. There is this Humans to Mars initiative of which there are a few different advocacy groups, one including Explore Mars, and I had the opportunity to interview its leadership, Chris Carberry, the CEO, Joe Cassidy, the Executive Vice President, and Janet Ivy Dunsing, the President of Explore Mars, and here's what they had to say. Even if you're not interested in that, are you interested to find out if humans can live elsewhere in the solar system? Mars is the best, really the only viable place. Yeah, we're planning on going back to the moon, but it's really close to Earth, and it does not have nearly the resources that Mars does. Mars has water, Mars has an atmosphere. You can't breathe it, but you can use it. It's, Mar man, Mars has an extraordinary geological past and might sustain life itself. So it's just, you know, one of these places we want to go. We want to understand the nature of life in the universe as well as understand our own planet. But as I said earlier, it's also a way to benefit life here on Earth, to bring nations together and to create innovations that, will, that could dramatically improve life here on Earth. Not just quality of life, but also create markets and create jobs. Yeah, high paying, high level jobs of all kinds. Is there an interest in terraforming Mars, making it look more like Earth? And sure. Yeah. Is that the main interest or is there more to it than that? I, I think the, the initial interest is really just uh, trying to understand if life ever developed anywhere else in the solar system. And there's you know a good chance that we might find some fossil record of some kind of life on Mars. We know it was once much warmer and much wetter than it is now. And the fact that you know, we can see that from the, the missions we've already done out there um, that leads us down that path, and, and that answers a really important question of, you know, are we totally unique, or did life develop in other places? And then beyond that, I think there is the interest that someday maybe we would be able to go there and settle as a second planet and have humans live there for long periods of time. It's going to be a long road to do that. Uh, there's no easy way to terraform Mars. Most of the people that talk about it, you know, talk in terms of centuries. Um, so I think that's a great, you know, kind of thing. Uh, certainly uh, lots of great uh, science fiction, uh, you know, has been written about the possibilities of doing that. But if we do go to Mars, I think we'll, we'll go for a long time on more scientific expeditions. Uh, similar to how we sort of deal with Antarctica now, you know, we have people that go and study and uh, spend time there, but then, you know, we have to supply from here uh, all the needs that they have and, and uh, then eventually uh, bring them back home. So I think that's what I see in my, you know, my time horizon and maybe for the next hundred years or so. Uh, I've got several answers. My favorite quote from Gene Roddenberry says, we are on a journey to keep an appointment with whatever we are. That's why we explore Mars. And, you know, if you, there's even a book years past that gathered some of the brightest minds ever and asked this, why does man explore? Why, why do humans explore? And, you know, it may be trite to say, oh, it's in our DNA, but there is something about like what else is out there? Are we alone? What is this construct of earth that we are situated in the HZ or habitable zone of our star? Mars is only 50, 50 more million miles away from the sun, right? And so when we think of it like that, it's not that life couldn't have existed, but why didn't it continue? You look at the discoveries made by all the rovers there. We know that water once had to have been there. You cannot have the kind of rust and iron oxide hematite that is there without at one point in time having water. Now, from curiosity to perseverance and others, we've 
noted these very strange kind of striations going, that's like evidence of running water. Perseverance actually landed in Jezero Crater, an ancient river delta. And so what we're looking for is, you know, fossilized life, microbial life. And as Dr. Jim Garwin talks about it, he says, he goes, what we're really looking for are agnostic biosignatures, meaning life as we don't know it. So is it possible that Mars harbors life, but not as we know it, as it exists here on Earth? So is it a possibility of an agnostic biosignature that we have not yet encountered? So for me, the why Mars is we go to figure out how we're all interconnected and how this amazing space and maybe, who knows, but maybe land on a greater appreciation for this beautiful blue ball we all live on. Um, the other reason is it's a great reason in education to get kids to dream beyond their desktops or hometowns and to think of some, to think of science and space exploration as the grandest adventure story ever. I mean, what's more exciting to a kid than hopping in your rocket and buckling in and blasting off and launching and discovering new worlds? So for me, why Mars is all about what will it mean if we go and find and stand there and do research and attempt to thrive and live there? What will that do for us back here on Earth as we watch those first uh, amazing kind of adventurers go there? Um, but also what it will mean for technology, for medicine, for all kinds of innovations that may solve problems here on Earth. We just recently had a Mars, the Mars Innovation Challenge, and this was for kids K through 12. And I'm just going to make a statement to everybody out there listening. Listen to the kids. They're the geniuses. I'm not worried about the world when I talk to K through 12 kids and stuff. If I talk to adults, I get worried, but <laughs> it's like K through 12 do, do not, they will never disappoint. But the things they were coming up with, it's like these ridge solar gardens and how to like do all manner of things and innovations. They're already thinking that. So imagine if we can grow and food and cellular bioreactors, can that, would that possibly up in, you know, food scarcity here on earth? So I guess that's my invitation as president of Explore Mars is just to ask if you were wondering how can this benefit you, where you are, wherever you are in the world, like what would be the thing that would matter? Would it be better technology? Would it be like some kind of medicine that could be curing something that we have yet to figure out a way to grow or manufacture here on Earth, but yet we can in 38% gravity on Mars? Can it potentially solve food scarcity? What else might we learn about going there? I think all of those propositions are worthwhile reasons for why Mars. So lastly, we need to go to Mars to become a multiplanetary species. There have been five mass extinction events here on Earth, and that should cause a lot of us some a great deal of concern. I had the chance of interviewing Dr. Robert Schock, who has outlined that the sun has been responsible for some of these catastrophes here on Earth. And if you'd like to hear more with Dr. Robert Schock, please go watch my extended interview with him on YouTube. But we are mostly familiar with this idea of colonization thanks to people like Elon Musk and his company SpaceX. He is trying to get humans to Mars there. And, you know, it's, it's to make a backup of our species in case a comet comes and hits this planet again or the sun has another solar outburst and causes worldwide flooding or destruction. You know, we really do need a backup planet. We really need to ensure the survival of our species. So, you know, there's this argument, well, you know, why should we be so concerned about going to Mars when we've got so many problems here on Earth? Well, look, we can walk and chew gum at the same time, folks, all right? The amount of money that we spend on space exploration pales in comparison to the other programs, you know, that we have here on Earth. We need people working on space exploration. 
just like we need people working on a variety of other issues. Um, but arguably, this is one of the most important things, given how fragile life is here on Earth, and given the extraordinary evidence of mass extinctions in the past. So, if you'd like to hear more about life on Mars, about pyramids on Mars, please watch Blue Planet Red, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.